This is Mr. Aiden, and this is 7.1 Thermodynamics, and this is going to be a little bit more difficult of a vodcast to understand. So you might have to do it once or twice, and you might have to take notes while going through it. So um, you definitely want to really understand each process of thermodynamics. Now, thermodynamics depends on basically two, three laws, okay? The zeroth, yes, that is a word, zeroth the first, and the second law of thermodynamics. Um, the zeroth law of thermodynamics is basically, it says that heat flows out of the warmer object, that's called exothermic, heat being released or removed, and into the colder object, that would be endothermic or absorbing heat, until they both reach thermal equilibrium. Every time you walk outside, every time you go work out, every time you do anything um, that involves some heat, getting transferred from a warmer object to a colder object, that's the zeroth law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics says that energy can't be created or destroyed, so it goes right with the zeroth law. And it depends on three equations, and you want to write these equations down. The first equation is delta U equals Q plus W. Okay? Delta U is a thing called internal energy. Internal energy. Q is a thing called heat. Okay. And W is, of course, work. And that little on right there is the work done on the system. The work done on the system. Okay? And so that's work done by the gas that's on the system. Okay? We have a second equation which is, defines the work done on the system. And so the work done on the system is equal to negative P, which is pressure, delta V, which is volume. Okay? So work done on the system equals negative P, delta V. And then our last equation is delta U, which is the change in internal energy, is equal to 3 halves NR change in T. 3 halves the number of moles, that's N, R, which is the gas constant, which is 8.31. We will be using 0 0.0821, guys, okay? So this is not chemistry. We're going to use 8.31 and change in temperature or change in, de in degrees Kelvin. Okay, now guys, the first equation and second equation are on your equation sheets. This last equation is not on your equation sheet. Delta U equals 3 halves NR change in T, so you might want to add that to your equation sheet. Okay, um, so we have these three equations, and if you can see, the second and third equations define both the work and both the internal energy, which means you're going to use both those and then use that first equation to solve for the Q or the heat. Okay, let me show you how this uh, this ends up working out. Okay, and this is we're going to be doing a bunch of what we call PV diagrams, pressure and volume diagrams. And you can see pressure is on our y-axis, volume is on our x-axis here. And we're going to take this process right here of going from from A to B. Okay, straight up from A to B. Okay, and you can see what is constant in this graph. Volume is constant. We start at point A, which is at 20 meters cubed, and at point B, we're still at 20 meters cubed. Okay. What has changed is pressure's changed here. Okay. So we have isovolumetric is called constant volume. Okay. So whenever we say constant volume, we are isovolumetric. And if you think about it, what does this result in? Your change in volume is zero. It did not change. We stayed the exact same volume the whole time. So change in volume is zero, which means if change in volume is zero, then what is the work done on the gas? The work done on the gas is zero, of course, right? because it doesn't matter what pressure is, the delta V is zero. So the work done on the gas is zero. There's no work. We didn't do any work here. Okay, no work. Whenever you have a straight line going up or down, you, you don't do any work. Okay, there's no work done on the gas. Okay. Now there's also if it, the better chemistry that you, that you have, the easier this will be. And if you think about it, if we are increasing our temperature, we're increasing our sorry, we're increasing our pressure. And but volume has stayed constant. How do you increase pressure of a gas if you're keeping the same um, volume? Well, you have to increase the temperature, and guys. Temperature and pressure are directly proportional, proportional, which means if temperature doubles, then pressure will double. You can take a look. The pressure went from 200 to 400, which means if the temperature started at 100 degrees Kelvin, you're now at 200 degrees Kelvin. And so the, pr the temperature was doubled. The temperature went up or positive. It went up. It, 
because the pressure went up, the temperature went up. So if the temperature goes up, what can you say about the internal energy? The internal energy will be positive, okay? Because it's three halves and our change in T. So let's go back to our first law of thermodynamics, our equation delta U equals Q plus W. What do we know about the work? The work do is done on the gas is zero. The delta U is going to be a positive number, which means what does that mean about my Q? My Q has to be what type, type of number? A positive number, which means if Q is positive, that means you absorbed heat. You absorbed heat. It is endothermic. You absorbed heat. It's endothermic. Okay? That is a that is when the arrow is going up like this. Okay? Let's take a look at a, a a second part of this PV diagram, and that is from B to C. And what's happening from B to C is it, we have this this curve happening on a PV diagram. And if you've you've seen Boyle's law in chemistry, you've seen this curve before. Um, we're studying it right now in AP Chemistry, and that means we are isothermal. Isothermal. Isothermal means we have a constant temperature. Our temperature is not changing. At at B, let's say at B we were at 200 Kelvin. Let's, we were at A was at 100 Kelvin. Okay, you, we know that temperature doubled, and so at C we're still at 200 Kelvin because we were isothermal. We were at isothermal. Okay, and so if we were isothermal there, what can we say is the change in the temperature is zero. There's no change in temperature. There's absolutely no change in temperature, which means if the change in temperature is zero, what can we say about the internal energy? It is zero. Okay. It, if one, if the change in temperature is zero, the internal energy is zero. Now, something I do want to see is take a look. The volume was increased, wasn't it? The volume went up. The volume went from 20 to 40. Okay. You you can take a look. The pressure actually goes down, doesn't it? The pressure goes down. The pressure goes from 400 to 200. But you can see the volume went up. So the volume, this change in volume, is going to be a positive number. But there's a negative symbol right there. And so you have a negative of a positive change in volume, which means the work done on the gas, the work done on the gas will be a negative number overall, a negative number overall. And then we come back to our first law of thermodynamics, our delta U equals Q plus W equation. We know our work done on is going to be a negative number. We know our change in internal energy is zero. There's absolutely no change in internal energy. Which means, what type of number does Q have to be? If work done on is negative and you end up be, being zero at the end, this has to be a positive number, doesn't it? And what do we know when Q is positive? What do we call that? We call that endothermic. We call that absorbing heat. So we absorbed heat in order to go from B to C. We have one last, um, one last little segment on this graph, and that is going from C back to A. From C back to A, what is staying constant on this? You can see pressure staying constant, and we call that isobaric. Isobaric, okay? And so pressure has stayed constant, and so if you think about it, we don't have our our volume is changing, isn't it? Our volume, our change in V is going down, okay? Because we've gone from 40 right here, 40, we've gone down to 20, so we've actually decreased my change in volume. So let's come down to my work done on the gas. We know this will be a negative number because we're decreasing, but we still have that negative right in front. And what do we know about a negative of a negative? It becomes a positive. So I did positive work done on my gas during this little segment right here. Okay. Now let's take a look at what happened to the temperature. Okay. Let's come back up to my graph. Now the volume went down. The volume decreased. Okay. And but my pressure stayed constant, of course. The pressure stayed constant. Now, how, do, how does my volume go down is my temperature has to go down, has to decrease as well. And that is, if you remember, that is Charles's Law. When the temperature goes down, the volume goes down. When the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. Think of a hot air balloon. Okay, and so what can I say about my change in my temperature? That will be a negative number, won't it? My change in temperature is a negative number. Okay, which means when you take a look at my delta U equals three halves N or change in T, my delta U will be a overall a negative number. And that means we're coming back to my first law of thermodynamics. My delta U equals Q plus W. You can see every single time I'm 
ending with this equation right here. What can I say about my internal energy? It's going to be negative. What can I say about my work done on the gas? It will be positive. Okay? And so if you think about it, what plus a positive has to be a negative? Q has to be a big negative number, doesn't it? Okay, in order to override it, which means Q is going to be negative, which means that is called exothermic. That means we released heat. That means the system is probably going to get um, much warmer there. Okay, and so that is now in my overall process. And this is what I want you to. One thing that I want you to get from this whole thing is, if I go from A all the way to B, back to C, back to A, if I make one full rotation the change in temperature, the internal energy of the whole process is zero, okay, because I'm ending up back at the same value, okay? And let's take a look at what happens. If I have something that looks like this, a PV diagram that looks like this, if you take the area under the curve, that's the work. That's the work done on the gas, okay? And if you want to know whether it's going to be positive or negative, just look at this, you know, you can look at all the change in volumes, or you can just look at the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse will tell you whether it's going to be positive or negative. And since this hypotenuse is, the delta V is increasing on this hypotenuse right here, because the volume is increasing, remember the work done on the gas is negative P delta V. Okay, if the delta V is positive, of course the work will be a negative number, a negative number. Okay, one thing that we can see is, um, at point number one, you can see at point number one they gave us our temperature, they gave us, we know our pressure, we know our volume, and I can use PV equals NRT, that, that old uh, Pivnert equation, okay? And you can see my pressure, my pressure would be 100 times 10 to the third, okay? My volume is 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. My moles are what I'm trying to find. My R is always going to be the 8.31 number in physics, and I have 300 Kelvin. Okay, and I end up just doing a little bit of algebra to find my moles, and my moles are gonna would end up being 0 0.004 moles. Now, just think about our three equations: our, our delta U E equals Q plus W. Uh, think about my um, think about about my work on the gas it equals negative P delta V. Think about my delta U e equals three halves N. That's the number of moles, R, change in T. Now I can actually use those numbers and quantify anything, okay, because I have the number of moles. One last thing is talking about a heat engine here. <laughs> Sorry, that was P delta V right there. My bad. Um, thanks, Michael Chung. Um, the last thing is talking about a, a, the difference between a heat engine and a heat pump. Um, think about a heat engine. What does a heat engine do? A heat engine produces heat. It releases heat into the atmosphere, which means the work done by the gas will be positive. Or the work done on the gas is, of course, negative. It is released, okay? It is released. And that would be a clockwise, a clockwise PV diagram. A clockwise PV diagram. You'll see over this whole entire process, you will actually release heat, and that is called a heat engine. That is what happens when you want something to heat you up during the, the winter time. Okay, you want in your refrigerator or your air conditioner in the summertime, you want it to be a heat pump. You want it to pump out the heat. You want it to um, be cold inside. Okay, and that is where the work done by the gas is going to be negative, or you could say the work done on the gas is going to be positive, okay? And that is not a clockwise but a counterclockwise fashion. And that is that is when you are actually absorbing the heat. And you think about it, when you put something warm inside a, a freezer, it needs to absorb that heat in order to cool it down. Okay? Guys, I hope this helped. This was a pretty long vodcast that had a lot of detail. Make sure you go over those three sections of the PV diagrams before you come into class. All right, I'll talk to you later, and I'll catch you on the flip side.